Hey everyone, Dale here with Pacific Sun Technologies. Today's topic is one we're constantly asked and somehow have managed not to make a video about it. It's kind of funny. Well, that's changing today. We want you to have a better understanding of the pros and cons for a solar finance option to a solar lease option. But before we get into it, please take a second to subscribe to the channel by clicking that button down below. Yeah, the one right down there. And if you're in our area of Southern California, visit us online to receive a free competitive quote. All right, let's talk solar ownership versus solar leasing because many homeowners like you watching this video have hopes of going green face this decision to buy or to rent because that's basically what a lease is, renting. And I'm going to do my best to stay unbiased on this topic, but it's worth noting Pacific Sun Technologies encourages you as a homeowner to own your solar energy over leasing it. And we offer a variety of financing options to customers like yourselves. Now that I've gotten that out of the way, to understand where leases even started and why, I have to take you back a little over seven years ago when the solar industry was just starting to become widespread. Mind you, we've been in the industry for over 12 years and pricing is really what made leases so enticing back then. Solar was, you know, pretty expensive, almost double, it was basically double what it is today. And Sunrun was the first company to offer a solution to going solar for everyone with a third party ownership option and with no money down. Before the Sunrun lease, you had to pay in cash to go solar or refinance your home. There really wasn't any financing options available back then besides that. Thankfully, things have changed and now there are multiple options to going solar, many of which we actually offer. But we're focusing just on these two things, financing a solar purchase with a loan so you own it and leasing a solar system that a third party company owns. I'm going to include a cash purchase option just for comparison purposes. Some clear advantages and disadvantages of the two. When you own your solar system, you receive all local, state, and federal tax credits or rebates that are available. Whereas if you lease the system, the leasing company receives them. If you're someone that may not benefit from the rebate, I can understand how a lease could be better. But keep in mind, there are different types of leases. Some offer fixed monthly payments with a buyout option at a specified interval time, while other lease options may have annual rate increases, which in turn increases your lease payment each year. And then there are lease options that you buy the power from the system that it generates, so your monthly payment will fluctuate regularly. All three options may appear to start out cheaper than financing a solar system, but it's important to know which lease option you're receiving. So always read your contract. Many of them will include, I know ours does, a monthly payment breakdown. So you know what you're gonna pay every single month. I wanna show you three options side by side, a cash purchase, zero down, zero down financing to own, and zero down fixed lease payment. These figures are based on a relatively common system size for our area of Southern California, which is a 5.4 kilowatt system using Q-Cells, Q-Peak Duo G6 panels, and SolarEdge optimizers and inverter. This solar system should offset an electric bill around $160 if you're a SoCal Edison customer. Keep in mind, the savings could be greater or less depending on your electric rate from your utility provider. Now, I'm only showing the net cost, which would be after the current federal tax credit of 26%. Side note, this tax credit decreases next year to 22% before vanishing entirely for residential customers. So if you're someone looking to go solar in our area, visit us online at pacificsuntech.com to receive a free quote. I'm providing you a link in the description below. And uh, while you're down there, click the subscribe button. All right. Okay, back to the figures. As you can see, if you purchase your system in cash, you'd have a return on investment of 5.4 years. This means you'll have made back what you spent buying the system in full by that time. 
Everything after this five point year mark is money you would have paid to the utility companies. So in turn, that's actually money you're saving or I like to say money you're earning. Looking at a financing option to own with no money down, this is the option we offer a lot of customers. And as you can see, your monthly payment is less than what you'd be paying on average to SoCal Edison. That means you're saving on average $60 a month or almost $1,000 a year. That's quite a significant savings. Remember, you finance the system, you do have to take into account interest and your long-term savings does take a small hit. But keep in mind you were saving money the entire time, whereas the cash, you have to wait for that payback point to start seeing your savings or earnings. Comparing these two ownership options to a lease with zero down and a fixed monthly payment, I wanted to show all lease options I mentioned earlier, but it's difficult for me to show a side-by-side -side comparison of the different leases, especially those with escalators. But you should know that a lease with escalators will cost more long-term than a fixed monthly payment option because the payment will continue to increase year over year until you either buy the system or pay to have it removed. The best way to actually see if the payment is better than a finance option is to add all the payments up, which you know the lease should show you a payment schedule with the escalators estimated. Add all 240 payments together or 20 years worth, however long the term is, and then divide it by that amount of payment. So 240 if you're gonna be doing it for 20 years or you know 120 if it's for 10 years. Now that average will you'll be able to compare to an ownership option and you'll you'll see that the monthly payment might appear to be less in the beginning than financing but you have to note that that lease tends to be smaller than an ownership too because they're typically only designed to provide 75 percent to 90 percent of your energy usage meaning you'll be buying the difference from the utility company at hopefully hopefully a lower rate the lease option i'm showing here does have a lower monthly payment of 85 dollars and it's only designed to offset most of your energy usage it's, it's actually at 85 percent for this uh, scenario of your current energy costs that we just discussed of the 160 dollars from socal edison so while this all appears to be less than financing a solar system on a monthly payment comparison you got to just add all the payments together divide it by how many payments there were and you'll see that the payment is actually greater than if you just own the system now that's even before you factor in the electricity you'll still have to buy from the, your, your utility provider. So once you do that, you'll barely save over $400 a year. I mean, that's less than half of what owning it or financing it would be. And looking at the long-term savings, you have to either buy out the lease or pay to have it removed. Either way, your net savings over 20 years is far less than financing it or paying it out in cash. I often have to help people understand the value to owning a solar system even without factoring in a tax credit. This at times can be a little difficult because homeowners get stuck on a monthly payment, but the long-term and short-term savings will always be greater if you opt to own your solar energy rather than leasing it. And that's primarily due to a solar lease not being an investment. See, you do not have ownership of the solar system itself. A solar lease is basically a long-term com financial commitment meant to last 10 to 20 years and to offer a slight savings compared to your utility rates. Some companies will say, you know, 10, 10 or 20% less than the average utility rate. Now, I'm not saying there's no place in the world for a solar lease because there have been many incidences where a lease really did make sense for a particular person or business for that matter. For example, if you want a solar system but lack the cash or do not have access to a well-structured loan, solar lease options could be a way to go. Or if you do not have a high enough income or you're a nonprofit organization and cannot take advantages of the tax credits and deductions, then a lease might be more enticing and it could be better but it's really you got to really look at all the figures for that decision and those are just two just a handful of examples um, that i'm providing 
to why a lease may be better than owning. But like I said, everyone's situation is going to be different. And while I feel I've done my best to compare the two options, there are some additional points I'd like to make that a lease and a financing option actually share. And people tend to think you only get with the lease. Both options typically offer savings from day one. Both options typically offer a performance warranty. Maintenance and repair and or replacement are generally covered under a workmanship warranty or a service warranty ranging from the minimum set by California state law of 10 years to the maximum that most companies offer like ourselves, 25 years. Solar inverters typically come with a 10 year warranty, but if you're getting a solar edge system or an end phase energy microinverter system, you'll probably be getting 25 years, which that's what those systems come with, at least in our area of California. That's pretty much all I have to discuss for this topic. I'd love to hear your opinion on the matter. So please be sure to leave a comment below. Let me know if a lease was better for you or if you went with an ownership option and, and let me know why. I, I'd love to hear your feedback. And while you're down there leaving a, leaving a comment, subscribe to the channel. And remember to ask yourself when you're considering a lease, if you haven't gone solar yet, remember, would you commit to renting your home for 10 to 20 years financially? I wouldn't. Thanks for watching. Until next time.